previously on City Planner Plays Timberborn. I think we'll just go straight bush. Let's add some lanterns. A little privacy, some bushes. There we go. I dig that. That is cool. Food. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, no. Well, you know what? At least we've built them an interesting place to die. <laughs> Banglorious, you died. I'm very sorry. I'm very sorry. I have, I have let you down in particular. <laughs> Hello, all of you vaingloriously wonderful people. So, yeah, this is the folktales district in Timberborn that City Planner plays nearly obliterated through starvation. If you weren't there, this calamity took place during his March 14th stream. He was busy detailing a brand new boardwalk and pier, completely oblivious to the chaos that was unfolding around him. Huh, I seem to remember that happening once before. So while I was planting a bunch of trees, it looks like most of Magnolia County has encountered some sort of a fire. So as a result, we've got a ton of bodies all over the place and a ton of buildings that have burned down. Anyway, with around a dozen and a half beavers remaining, I mentioned in chat that I wanted to save file. I mean, hey, who doesn't want a chance to play with City Planner Plays Beaver? My plan? Bring the district back from the brink of extinction. My first action was to pause the game and then pause every building. Every farm, every factory, even every water pumping house, it was all paused. Then it was a matter of taking stock of how many beavers were remaining, identifying existing structures closest to the district center, and strategically unpausing enough housing along with water and basic food production to keep things stabilized. Before we move on, I want to take a moment to talk about the beaver names you'll see today. In the first part of the video, you will see beavers named after all of City Planner Play's patrons, YouTube members, and Twitch subscribers. There is a mod that lets him create that custom list of names. As we progress through today's video, those names will begin to disappear. I don't use that mod, so I couldn't add the names. Beyond that, I don't have the list of names of all of CPP's supporters, so I couldn't add them even if I did use that mod. And while I considered using my own channel supporters' names, it would have been a short list. I only have four supporters on Patreon, between a dozen and 18 subscribers on Twitch, and no one has become a channel member on my YouTube channel yet. With only 22 names maxed, it just wouldn't have worked. So you will see the game's default names start to appear pretty quick. Anyway, let's take a look at how I turned this district around. With everything stabilized, I was able to come up with a nine part plan. Part one, stockpile food and water to allow for slow and steady growth. I could have left things right where they were and still feel like I had accomplished my mission. The district was not going to starve to death. They were producing more than enough food and water to sustain them. Sadly, there was not enough resources to continue producing fuel and catalyst, so the dozen or so timber bots in the district slowly broke down. Don't worry though, we will see them again before the end of this video. The workers insisted on traveling halfway across the map to continue work on the fateful pier that City Planner Plays had begun during his livestream. To keep them focused on any new construction I would begin, I set all of that to the lowest priority. Even though I only had two workers in the district center at this point, I did not yet have enough new projects to keep them occupied. So off across the map they go, trying to continue building what almost led to their demise. The only way to stop them was to sever all path connections to the area. This was no easy task. It would seem City Planner Plays had created numerous connecting paths and it took a few minutes to track them all down. I'd click on the district center to highlight paths, trace one to the pier and delete its connection, and then repeated that process until every building project remaining was unreachable. Just like the timber bots, I do not plan on abandoning that area. With all of that out of the way, I took a moment to review all of the jobs to ensure none were assigned to timber bots and that all shared equal priority. 
I didn't want to wind up in a situation where I suddenly needed to turn on a bunch of water pumps only to discover I lacked enough workers. Personally, I'd rather see a beaver sat on its butt all day doing nothing if that means I have the peace of mind knowing that all workplaces are filled. With the district slowly growing, it was time to move on to part two of my plan. Part two was, quite simply, making sense of all the levees, floodgates, and dams that City Planner Plays had built. I went through a couple of droughts and bad waters to wrap my head around how quickly the water would run out during these difficult seasons and how quickly it would return during the temperate season. One thing became clear early on. The huge reservoir built near the ill-fated pier was robbing the district of too much water. Even if I held on to it until everything else was dry, it would empty too fast and was unable to sustain the district through the remainder of the challenging seasons. I spent a while trying to find a way to manage at least some water reserves because I know City Planner Place spent a lot of time building the reservoir, so I really wanted to make it work. In the end, it was best to simply leave it fully opened at each end while also opening up the floodgates in front of the larger water source. Without that larger water source, too much land remained arid for far too long and too many water pumps were setting the top dry ground. With the reservoir dealt with, it was time for the third part of my plan. Part three was all about understanding what was in production and where, how it was stored and where, and then beginning to optimize all of the production chains. There were numerous production chains that either had insufficient storage to keep them running, or the storage was far enough from the resource production building that the beavers were spending most of the day running back and forth from storage to production and very little time actually producing anything. Some crops were swapped out or reduced, some key trees that could be used for food were unmarked for cutting, and some additional trees were planted. All the while, the district continued to grow. By the end of around three hours, I had the district back around 150 beavers. Part four of my plan presented itself to me unexpectedly. Yeah, I had already experienced one other bad tide at this point, but I had not really paid much attention to what was happening over here after I adjusted the gates and unpaused the game to resume earlier parts of my plan. This area is what I have lovingly named Phil's Poop Shoot. Before he descended into chaos in the March 14th stream, he had built this clever canal to reroute the bad water from the smaller water source during the bad tide. And it worked. Sort of. As you can see, once the bad water reached the end of Phil's poop chute, it spilled over the edge and worked its way back across to the fresh water we were trying to preserve. Thankfully, there was already some dirt from the dirt excavator in storage, so I was able to build up a wall on one side of Phil's poop chute, preventing anything that was gushing out from there threatening to contaminate the fresh water. Yeah, the bad water still floods the land on the other side, but there's nothing important over there, so it's fine. With Phil's poop chute no longer spewing all over the place, I could move on to the next phase of my plan. Part five of my plan was actually multifaceted. In fact, a lot of what I did overlapped quite a bit, as things tend to do in Timberborn. But I had already planned out a very large expansion of planks and gears in anticipation of reintroducing Timberbot production at some point. Plus, I would be needing a lot of those gears and planks for other construction as well. With that area planned out, I wanted to add new housing in the same area. While there were still hundreds of empty beds and the houses paused over by the pier, I did not yet want to send beavers to live over there as all of the production was still happening much closer to the district center. In fact, my overall plan was to reserve the housing City Planner Place had built by the pier until the very end when I was sure everything was working as planned. So I added in some housing and even a couple of observatories. Why add observatories when nearly every building was already unlocked? Well, because I wanted to make sure I had enough science to spend on unlocking Timberbot worker slots in every building. That could take tens of thousands of science, so I felt it was a good idea to begin stockpiling those science points now, so by the time the Timberbots were in production again, I could choose the jobs I felt were most needed. In fact, once I wound up with around 25,000 science points, I began unlocking those Timberbot worker slots in every single building and then resetted them back to beavers. The other facet of this plan was to begin boosting well-being. Through a combination of social buildings, 
fun buildings and decorations, I was able to keep overall well-being in the high 20s to low 30s. This increased worker speed, walk speed, and life expectancy. It also brought me to the next part of my plan. Part six of my plan was all about bringing my own touch to the district. And nothing says Vainglorious Gaming plays Timberborn more than overbuilding a power network with numerous redundancies. I was already around six hours in at this point, and as much as I wanted to build a massive wall of terrain blocks to the max build height, then blast right next to it all the way down to the maximum death, then stick a bunch of batteries on top of the wall, I didn't do it. It took a lot of self-control. Instead, I built out a fairly large wind farm, added one extra battery, and blasted beneath each of the two batteries that existed to bring their storage from 10,000 HP to 18,000. While the windmills were under construction, I remember someone in chat had mentioned during City Planner Play's livestream that he should build a few water wheels in Phil's poop chute to gain some extra power during a bad tide. That was a good idea, and I wish I could remember who mentioned it. So I planned out six water wheels to shove into Phil's poop chute and found a way to run power shafts across to the wind farm. With power sorted out, I was on to part seven of my plan. Part seven was primarily about two things, though I added a third near the end, which we'll look at in a minute, though I guess that's actually really part nine. The first phase was to begin allowing the workers to build out the remainder of the area by the pier. It would be a long journey, but I wanted to ensure there would be ample food and water stored in that area before I let it beaver start moving in. I was running a pretty big deficit of workers at this point, though it wasn't nearly as bad as it looked. I knew if I was going to let beavers live over by the pier, we would need a lot of haulers to move things around. In total, there are nine hauling posts staffed by 90 beavers. At this point, there were only seven and they were all marked to a low priority. So despite having over 50 open jobs at some point, only five buildings actually lacked workers. With everything that Phil had planned out finally built and all of the storage fully stocked, it was time to very slowly begin unpausing all of that housing in part eight of my plan. I went fairly slow, unpausing enough houses to provide about 20 empty beds at a time. Once all of those beds were filled, I monitored food and water just to be certain it would hold steady. I repeated that process until all of the houses were unpaused and I knew that food and water were sufficient. Then I switched gears and finally turned the bot assembler back on. I had unpaused the bot part factories earlier in the day and storage was nearly full of bot parts. As the bots came online, I first assigned them to their own production, bots making bots, then bot parts, then fuel and catalyst, and finally the workplaces that produced the goods for fuel and catalyst. Had I kept playing, I would have expanded the timber bots into all of the materials that go into their production as well, and then on into food and water production. With just one bot assembler, it is not going to be possible to replace all beaver workers with timber bots. They will simply begin breaking down quicker than they can be replaced. If someone wants to get enough bots to do 100% of the jobs in the district, they'll probably need six more bot part manufacturers and two or three more bot assemblers, plus a lot of power to keep all of that running. The final phase of my plan is one we're going to jump into live gameplay to talk about, so let's do it. And here we are. What sums up the best part of of Phil's streams than the dance hall. This is where he kept coming to show people just how cute the game was. And everybody, I think, bought the game site. You know, just they saw this like, yep, buy the game. Uh, and because it, it is, it just look at them go, just shaking their little booties. It's fantastic. So I want to look at some things that I added in. So we finally got the merry-go-round? I forget what it's called. Carousel. The carousel. We finally got the carousel in. It, it got built. I had to do a couple of adjustments to what Phil had planned, um, and it needed more power. The two wind that he had was was insufficient. And I thought, you know what, since we're here by the water, what a, a better place since we wound up talking about hot tubs and chat than building a couple mud baths for the beaver as well. So those went in right here. 
Uh, and I think they were uh, a really nice addition. The, the beavers are having a great time. Uh, they even have a, a couple statues to look at in a lantern at night, to, just so it's not creepy over here. Um, we also added in uh, a few showers down here. Oop, don't want to go too far over that way. Trust me, there's a bunch of showers down here. And then let's take a look at the next thing that, that I added for my own personal little touch for the district. And that's a couple monuments up here. So the pier is right over there, though, sadly... Uh, because I had to let all the water out of the reservoir, as I mentioned, these are no longer in the water, so they're useless. Uh, but they look great, and, and you know what? His pier turned out fantastic. I did finish his fence for him. I'm pretty sure that's what he was going to do here. If not, you know what? If he decides to pick the save back up, which, by the way, it is in City Planet Plays uh, Discord, where I left off uh, in the general channel, uh, March 14th, uh, around... 7 p.m. Central Time is when you would want to look. But that, that's the pier um, that he built. But then the final piece, I wanted to add something that I thought would be my interpretation of what City Planner Plays has taught all of us about having an attention to detail and using what the game affords to you to make something beautiful in the midst of everything that's functional. And uh, I built a park complete with a freaking fountain. <laughs> yeah, the, this is the most expensive monument in the game. It has to have water, so that's why there's a water or a fluid dump here. Blasted out just one deep, added benefit. It brought in some fertile land, so I was able to temporarily place a forester to plant some decorative trees these will never be cut down uh, eventually the oaks will grow we have some benches we have some hammocks and then we have some decoration along the back and uh yeah all in we're at 45 well-being we do have some bee stings it happens people say don't use the beehives until you get bots nonsense it's it if you do your well-being it Look, it has zero impact. Zero. Even though there's nine. And we have a couple of injuries. But everybody has had every type of food. So we are maxed out there. We have a couple who haven't had a few of these. So we could gain 0.1 here. Um, we could do better with social. Uh, we could definitely do better with decoration. We ignore the metal staircase. That's a mod that I have. But scarecrow, we don't have any anywhere. Uh, and we could probably do better with shrubs and lanterns as well. But then monuments were great. And then fun we could do better with. And there are books in production, though only one printing press. So it's taken a while for those to work their way through. But all in, we did it. Or I did it. <laughs> I saved it. I, I, I'm used to saying we for my YouTube series, but... uh. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure. And yes, there are still beavers that are hungry and thirsty, but it's only because they've traveled really far. They'll get their food and water. You can see we have ample food. This bounces between the high 17,000s and low 18,000s. Water stays above 8,000 almost all the time. Um, so we're doing good there. It looks like we even have another bot ready to go to work. We have 19 already in workspaces. Um, I'm going to go back to this view just because I think it's so much better. Um, I want to thank City Planner Plays, not only for sharing the save to allow other people to have a go at, at rescuing everything, but also for the Timberborn streams. They were fun. They were chaotic. It was so, it was just great watching you play and get in over your head at times and, and just kind of learn as you go and getting distracted by chat. It was it was really freaking fantastic. If you have enjoyed today's video, and I hope that you have, you know, there's the normal like, comment, subscribe, because those things all do help out the channel. I do have another regular Timberborn series that goes live every Friday. I have it scheduled out until May. Channel members can see it early, but if I don't get any channel members, well, it's just scheduled then. Um, but they are available to channel, member, channel members right now. Uh, I will be back to City Skylines 2 after the next big update. It's planned for March, I think, but who knows? Plus, I have an Astro New Year series that I feature on my channel and other content as well from GTA Online and a variety of other games. So I hope that you'll consider subscribing, but at least definitely leave a like if you enjoyed today's video and, and tell me your favorite part. Um, and it better not be the rude name I gave this because I mean 
that's just rude. Uh, anyway, thank you so much for watching. And we're going to go back over here because I just I like this view. I think it's perfect. You can kind of see everything that's happened. Until next time, I'm Brandon reminding you to stay vainglorious.